October 27th Area Planning Commission. Uh, first thing on the agenda is uh, introduction of members. Uh, Jim Heaney, Burlington and Yeoman uh, Town Representative. Thank you for us, City of Delphi Council. Miriam Burton, Delphi Mayor. Don Buckley, Carroll Council Mayor. Jeff Watson, North Memphis County Commissioner. Gordon Willis, uh, APC Candidate. Brad right Clark, Carroll County Council. Susie Carmen, Eagle Council. Cameron Yates, Area Plan Director. Gordon Willis, Administrative Assistant, Area Plan. Next thing on the agenda is the approval of minutes from our September 22nd. I have a correction. You guys thought I was kidding. I was not kidding when I voted against the extension bylaw. You said no, and I said no. I said I. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I missed it when I was approving the minutes. In the minutes, it says 6 0, but it should be 5 1. Okay. That's a minor detail, but. <laughs> I don't have one in this area, but. I know. I know. Okay. Especially given who my father in law is. Motion to approve the minutes with the amendment of the 510 on the amendment to the bylaws. And a second. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed against? Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda the be. Um, Rezone 2020-4 for Richard and Joyce Solman. Mm -hmm. Now, can I 
proceed with our motion or not. Yeah, if you can, if there's no other way, you can do it. Yeah, move to accept. To make a favorable recommendation. Make a favorable recommendation, yes. Okay. I'll second. Go ahead, a uh, motion to uh, give a favorable recommendation to the commissioners for the three zone. I want to add. Um, add a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Parcels in question, I'm in West Delphi. Um, these parcels contain um, two different single family homes that we own, and we currently rent both of them out. They're older homes, um, they're needing a, a pretty solid financial investment to fix them back up here soon. And my wife and I, we decided that we don't want to put that kind of money into them. Um, we're probably going to tear them down. Um, and the problem we have, um, once we tear them down, and it's not really conducive to try to build something back up there um, in the residential. I mean, there's something else to rent out. Um, the cost of new construction would be more than what we can probably ever rent them for and make a pay. So the problem we have, and we can't really do anything with them residential wise. Um, even if we decided, um, you know, how are you place the home, you're either looking at the propane company or you're looking at the tavern makes it not very marketable I mean, if we did decide to do something with it. So what we'd like to do, uh, we just want to do some uh, some employee parking overflow over there. We don't have any intentions of you know, putting any kind of a retail business there. Possibly um, one other storage barn I mean, if we get the zoning. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, it's it's not really very residential up there. So we'd like to get the zoning changed. So if we did decide to do some parking addition over there, we wouldn't have any problem with that. Or with the pool building. It's my understanding that the way it's zoned now, we could not build a building there. So that's basically Just recently, we questioned that. Um, it was showing up on the beacon system, and there's no owner. Okay. And I think Cameron helped us on that or something. I mean, yeah, we were here, you guys submitted everything to an attorney because it's a pretty lengthy process, but it, should, it says non platted. Uh, I can't remember, but it's in the attorney's hands now. No, we got it. That's the room we were talking about, which was already vacated. Oh, that's, the, that's the other one. Yeah. They're not the one to go with. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. 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 That road boy is in the blue. When the orange up to the next parcel has actually been yeah. vacated and it's fixed on beacon now. Okay. So I was kind of, I didn't know if this, what this is. But this that's is a garage under the house there, I think. Yeah. In the garage 
Yes. Which that vacated out, you guys already own it since you own that. Right. Okay, you so you got it once you, once you purchased that property. Yes. The beacon's not really updated yet. It is it is now. I took out before we got it fixed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, he don't know when our friend, those are the ones that they submitted to us, so it is updated now. Yes. So that we will open this up for public hearing at 611. And anybody in the front row have any questions or concerns? Anybody in the second row? Questions or concerns? Or the third row? Questions or concerns? Okay, and with that, we will close the public hearing at 612. And um, is there any other comments from the board? You basically need to make the same thing as make a motion um, be either favorable or non-favorable or no recommendation to the commissioners. To make a favorable recommendation. Since that is has that 50 foot easement, maybe I, I'm not sure what there is enough room to do to do the half acres there, but it could either be uh, it's been talked about with sitting in on either could be I won't have a whole lot of yard, I mean, the yards will be small, so I'm just thinking like maybe your condos or um, mother in law suites or something to help if, if they would sell that way. To do smaller housing or condos over there for a one two bedroom. The, so it's not the five that was. The five. It's just the lot, the yard size will be a lot smaller with the roadway and the 50 foot easement. I mean, the actual lot would still be a half acre. It's, it's but the easement we're going through is going to shorten it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just makes it less of a yard for the rest of the property. So, if that pleases, that is good.
two storage barns instead. That's that's not a definite. But it just the okay. garage is back there. Okay. I mean, it's not. So you're community. not you're definitely not going to put them in. There. Well, if you guys, I mean, we really them. Well, that's that seemed like that was the biggest concern. I mean, well, okay. Yeah. After we went back and looked at it, we, we started brainstorming with it. It is big enough. It is half acre lots. Right. So breaking it up is okay. It's just the only thing on the other. You know, the, the language in L1 says, Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know, you can't have storage units in L1. Yeah, we never, we never call it storage right. units. So that's the, that's the language thing as far as what you're going to, what you're going to build along with the, the ordinance. So keep that in mind. Yes. Our, the garages are for the, the since the lots are half size, we're not, we're not, we're not a big half lot, a half acre or more of a rural builder, so we have three acres and what we like. So you know, and then you have room to do that. But here there's not. And I don't want to see on the property little storage sheds that are, you know, you buy that's not the, you know, they deteriorate in three, five years. So our, the concept is is trying to keep the, the subdivision, the, the first person and the last person have the same respect and rights to the same width. So if you had, if you needed more of it, then, and that would, and it's not something that's right up front with it. It's just as it goes and as the, but as doing something with the, you know, the association with it to decide on how you know, it would work you know, maybe for that. Now, someone might just buy that and build a house with it and have a bigger section that they want that back there with, because that is big enough. And it's out of the view of it. Maybe one person might just buy that whole lot and build that around. I'm just, I was more up front to see options of what we was what we was looking at possibly where my buyers would be the one to but that's the only lot that we allow that it's big enough to have that. No. It's 150 by the they have been um, his design guy doing these um Jordan fall codes are engineer to get the drainage approved and I think as of today I think everything's kind of Finally, where it needs to be, we have to approve a few drains for yet, um, November 16th, to do so. side over there they showed the construction plans is a 20 or a 50 foot easement so that's why i think the sewer was put where it was to in the middle there that's why they stay in that five foot that was described in the deeds i don't know why what happened there but um, i don't know somebody we need to figure out something over there what's going on what are you guys do i guess i mean get that pen down so we can know for sure sewer line that runs from the campgrounds down through there too to get back to the treatment plant and then it gets treated and it comes out on the other side in an eight inch culvert that dumps out into a ravine that will go back to the lake after it's been treated. So, so the big question to catch you up is there is a that line that comes from the plant to the road is on Mr. Crane's property. We the last meeting tossed around we, the public discussion, we actually met after the meeting with um, his attorney and uh, had Kelly in the meeting. I haven't heard any of the, that there's an agreement been made, and I know that that's, um, that's, a, that's a big thing with not knowing. I mean, we know where it's at, I believe, now. But we know that the line is there. It's just a matter of the schematics of what we're going to do so, for that part of it. And I don't know. I can't, know what I can't move forward on this project unless the easements have been taken care of. Because if we approve something and the easements aren't taken care of, there's 
potential, and then if and they're not right, there's a potential lawsuit against the county and everybody else involved. Yeah, I agree so with that. I'm, I'm of the opinion that once the easements are taken care of, then maybe we can look at this and move forward on it. right to the north that I own, which is where the sewer plant is. This is my background. So I received a, so we did, um, Cameron, uh, Mr. Crane, and myself met with you um, afterwards. It was a good meeting. We got a lot of information done. And the direction from that meeting was, um, I, I was supposed to go out and get a survey to verify that the line is true about the easement. My surveyor did not want to go out to the plots again. He says he can now get out there. Um, but meanwhile, on the 21st, um, six days ago, I got a letter from Mr. Crane, and he requested $101,000, $101,500 to keep the sewer line where it is, or potentially it could be removed. Um, we don't believe that. You know, it's been there. We think we can prove that it's there. But $101,000 is kind of a, <laughs> that's a big deal. So we didn't expect that. Um, there were four other things in there, his letter that he um, submitted that he wants um, his attorney, Mr. Crane's attorney, submitted. Um, he believes that the fluent line, which has been there for over 40 years, I think, I don't know that exact number, is outside of the five foot easement. Um, we, we have some documentation, some research that shows that that easement is not five feet, um, and it's also longer than it should. Um, we sent a bill, um, a request for some tree removal outside of this. He also says there's a discrepancy on my 10 acre parcel where the steward line is. There's a 50 foot, he says, that potentially might be his property. We have a deed showing that I own it all, so that's an issue. And then he has a question about the garage buildings. He's now calling them garage buildings. The previous meeting, he mentioned he might rent those out if people in that neighborhood didn't want to do it. Um, so it's we, we have not worked out a deal yet. Um, I got this six days ago. I don't have $100,000 laying around to, so I need to do the research to go back in. Crop's out, or crop will be out. We can go in and do the survey to verify what he is telling us is correct. In my mind, I was thinking he might come back, you know, three or $4,000, let's get the work good. Let's pay my attorney's fee. I'm not suggesting I would pay that, but I was thinking it was gonna be a lot smaller number um, we believe by eminent domain, that sewer line can stay where it is. It's been uncontested. He bought the property. It was visually able to be seen where it was. There's manholes every 100 feet. There's an 8-inch subgrade. So he knew it was there. You can visually see that. Um, so he bought that. So we believe we can leave it there. But I do want to work this out with him. So I got it six days ago. It's a big number. So I really can't make a decision. Um, so he has an attorney. I did. I did. I have an attorney now, and she responded back with four questions for him um, to verify some things. And he, um, his attorney, Mr. Little, said he was going on vacation, but would try to get it back quickly. But my gut tells me, as slow as this goes, and as big as the number is this, this won't get solved super quickly um, until we get until we get really where that sewer line is. Um, there's also not only the line location, the outflow location is a big deal too. He's got a house that would take where the outfall is, where the fluid line leaves the sewer plant. So we, it's more than just that. The garages are an issue, but it's really that. And that could shut a 60 acre property down that we're spending a lot of money on. So that is a big deal to me. So that's an update. I'm happy to answer any questions. I've not seen this drawing. His attorney sent me a drawing that still showed five storage buildings, so I've not seen that. I wouldn't mind to get a copy of that. The letter we got on the 21st still shows five storage buildings. Um, so this is different. I would like to see if I could have a copy of it. Yeah. 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 Ye
I have not seen that. The one that his attorney sent me still showed. Let me just pull it open. I did not get a copy. Yeah. Okay. So it still showed the original storage buildings along here. Okay. And um, the two big ones. So first time I've seen this. Any questions? I'm sorry to, that I don't have a solution. I appreciate you putting the meeting together. Um, but I, we haven't been able to solve it in the past six days. I'm sorry, I'll do my best to try to make this thing so next next month we come back with some answers. Your surveyor has been pretty pretty Now that I understand it, that we can't just, I didn't know if I really cared about it, but now I understand it's such a big number. He is going to be out there. It's been on the schedule for over a month. Um, but he is going to go out there and get that done. Thank you. But the first meeting, he said they had these going through the middle of our property. And the last two meetings, he says he never knew where his effluent line was. So now he's saying that it's sticking four feet in the air and you can see it every day. I don't, it doesn't make sense. But. At the end of the day, we have to have the easements. No, I understand. I, I mean, but, we have to have that set up. Well, my question of it is I mean, if. if that's, it, that's why we're going through this process. I understand that you're getting frustrated, and I get that. But before us as a board is comfortable, we have to make sure that the, all the easements are settled. My question, my ask, my asking question. It's not frustration of it is. I'm asking of it is. But it only require. It only is part of the east side, which is uh, five lots. So could you not just put a hole in the five lots so we can get infrastructure in for the rest of it? And say you can't sell them five lots. Salary. Um, we took to uh, uh, the budget about giving Cameron the four thousand dollars. It was about halfway between what we um, hired him in at and what the uh, person supposed to make with the, the flood plan administrator certificate. Um, he's taken all the classes and everything. But um, during budget hearings, two of the council members come to me and told me that there was nothing that been a I mean, we're in charge of setting his salary, basically. So, um, I don't know if you guys are, would be in favor of um, making a motion to set his salary to 44563 we were asking, so we can just give that to him as a, this board done that, and we want that salary set at that, and see what the uh, council um, would do for getting that taken care of. He has, like I said, he's taken the class and um, several workshops and um, pretty much right now everything's shut down as far as a lot of those training sessions and um, test taking places because of the COVID. But um, I'm still trying to try to get something done this next year anyway to get the full pay. But so has there been any options for testing, Cameron, for getting your so-called certification? Uh, has that all been shut down because of COVID and all that stuff? The, the testing and that this year was canceled obviously for because of this. Right. Um, I, I took the class in February in Tennessee. Right. Yep. With FEMA and the state, I have communicated on this almost weekly, and they do not recommend that you take the class 
wait eight months and then take the test. The test is 300 questions long. Yeah. It's a national test. So if you can't, you have to dedicate yourself to it, drill in your head and go take the test or you're gonna waste your $500. Mm -hmm. So they recommended that you take the 273 class twice and then do this um, test after that in a two, within a two year period or after a two year period because it's so expensive. With that said, I'm already running the, I'm doing the, the work now. I've done it since my first week here. So and we don't know when the world of COVID is going to end. So I don't know when I'm going to have time to sit down and go home and just, I, I can't do it at work, obviously. There's too much going on. So I'm not willing to take the test until I dedicate myself for a month or two, whatever I got to do. So I'm stepping out of the coaching world for one season to, do what I gotta do, but it's it's not something you just want to go in like I did in high school per se and just kind of wing it because it's a it's a big thing. So yeah, because you took all that in February and then when would you take would you take the test? I would have done a pre-test. I and I were gonna go down to Indianapolis and do the pre-test. I think in March, May, May. and then they, yeah, of course, as as I, just as soon as I got back from training is when. Yeah, yeah. March 25th, before house shut down, everything. So at that point, everything that we were going to do as far as uh, the pre test and all that, it, everything was webinar, yeah. and some of those didn't even happen. Yeah. You know, so, um, it, are they still allowing like webinars? Or, I'm, I'm just trying to get You can still do things. webinars, but the webinars are um, they're not doing any pre testing, they're not doing anything at all in person. So they've got a 2021 schedule out. Now, will those happen? Yeah. For in person, for in person, yes. But they, but they re but what you're what you're telling me is they are recommending in person training again before you take the test. Is what you're saying? They're recommending that you take that two set called two seven three twice before okay. you take this test. Okay. Um, and that's a, all over the country. Right. Or the state of Indiana might put one on the March they say. So it could just be down in Indianapolis. The uh, federal. They put on Emmitsburg, Maryland, it's free. That one got canceled. Yeah. So, you know, the COVID changed everything. Right. Yeah. So, so what's the, what's the range of pay for the department of Hanson for that? You know what that is? No. I want the official I don't know. And the state says that. Set that everybody makes. I mean, like the highway supervisor makes more, and um, ambulance supervisor makes a certain amount. I mean, they're all. I mean, well, he at least be that. I think this position maxed up. When I hired in, it maxed out at forty nine something, and then after the five percent raise, it's now it's up to fifty, either fifty or fifty one is the, the max that you can get. So, yeah, we had we had dug it almost forty. I think it's almost forty seven. That was that was okay. actually less than half of what he was actually. Yeah. You know, so not even less. But that's, that was what he was going to with. So. Yeah. Which would be like thirty-two hundred now. I'm, not, I'm, I'm all right with what I'm not in this. To be agreed, you might even there's a, there's a lot to it, and I don't think with everything involved in this office, I just that's the number I come up with, and it's certainly your guys' decision. So if it's a no, it's a no, and I'll keep pitching away at it. We've, we've already, you guys have basically voted to approve, approve this stuff. Correct. We, 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 yeah, we yeah. just have to. Yeah. Yeah. The we budget. voted to approve the whole budget, so they wanted to, I think it made it, we need to actually have the board say we want to set this 20, 21 salary of this. Is there anything we could cut from here to give it to him to make the board feel like, oh yeah, we do that? I'm going to be buying pens from, I'll be taking them from my house. <laughs> what did they do the tax across the street? That's what I'm saying. What did they do with the tax rate, Cameron? Do you know? I know. I think it's still zero. I think. Okay. Um, we still have. It's still an 11 I, don't, I have not ever been approached for anything on that. So it was, it's still a few hundred thousand. So I figured it'd cover this question. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't think it would be in a. 
it's probably in the very near future. So. Yeah, it'll come back by next year. But if we did go, if we did request that he get paid what we originally requested, uh, will the council make us pay something else that we need to get money for them? Or more more likely they've approved the budget, the, the overall budget already, so it's going to probably gonna have to come from the, the budget of the department, I think. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, because I mean, it'd be enough to get going, and then it'd ask for additional. I don't know about how it's going to work. We have to just go to the council and find out. I'll give up my paycheck for it. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. If, if this gets back to the council and they say no, uh, at first I was pretty bad on it. No, I don't know. But at this point, I'm still doing the job and I still like the job. So uh, whatever happens, happens. So last year's budget versus this year's budget is going to be different about two percent, right? They give you that for a pretty much, yeah. Well, we want to seven five two percent all the year, yeah. Right. Well, that's across the board, everybody. So I mean, yeah. it, it's not just about me by any means. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to be that guy that's greedy and all that. So it was everybody that got the two percent, and that's what I get, and that's what I get. So um, I think at the end of the day, cameras made it. Very concerted effort to get the legislative designation. He's already doing them, along with a ton of other work. We might as well move forward with COVID. COVID has changed everything. I mean, it's not his fault that he can't take the case test, you know. So I'd say we continue to move forward and make a favorable recommendation to move it, continue to move the salary higher or, or get what we can from the council. And, let them know that, let the council know clearly that Cameron has made the effort and COVID is not his fault that COVID has basically canceled tests or the ability to take these classes again. So. I mean, we, I mean, we, I mean you've done, you done regular budget here again. I was at the department that meeting and re emphasize that again. They, that's when they said that right before the meeting that we needed to set the salary for the him and then we'd have to work on it from there, right? You, Johnny, do you need somebody at the council meeting to be there to back up what you have to say or um, somebody else from APC to say, look, Cameron's been working at this, he's been doing a good job, let's move forward with this? And I mean, not, I mean, I mean right, right now they're basically, they're getting ready to do salary the salary ordinance part of it for next year and yeah. then November. So that's why we was kind of trying to. And that's for everybody, correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a couple other. The next thing on our budget is something else for the salary thing, too. Yeah. So, uh, the corner of the budget. So. Is there somewhere you can cut, Cameron, on here that they make you cut somewhere else? Is there somewhere that you can spare anything? Only the insurance part. Yeah. Not no insurance. Yeah. Hopefully that we we all stay healthy. But right. I mean, you just don't know because yeah. we put that number in. We always put that number high because right. it's self-insured. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can see what we've used out of this year, which is hardly nothing. So I mean, I don't think I don't think it's impossible by any means if that's what they uh, requested. That's what yeah. um, there's a lot of them that's just simple stuff. Printing and stuff like that. Obviously, we can't. We better have that stuff. So yeah. We, the, I think, we requested twenty or twenty-five thousand for the group health insurance. I think that's what we need. You know, okay, we can be. But like I said, I'm, I, I certainly don't want to drag this out. <coughs> you know, so if, if they say it is what it is and go on about it, and that's just the way it is, we'll be done with it. So. Set a salary cap. We need to have a motion and vote on it. So. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we set Cameron's salary at what was originally requested, the forty-four five sixty-three, and present that to the council. Second. Salary of forty-four thousand five hundred sixty-three for two thousand twenty-one. Mm -hmm. And a second. 
And all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Against? Next thing on the agenda is um, split fee distribution. Um, remember a couple years ago we, or maybe it was last year, yeah. um, we, uh, Mr. Cameron talked to us about um, the research he has to do on a split. He has to go pull beads and stuff to make sure um, he can do these splits and um, set a fee for $25. Um, and basically, um, now the, there's a GIS position that's looking to get like an extra $700 to, to set up. The first deputy, uh, like we have first deputy does all our splits and stuff on the computer, and she's working during the day, it's like $16 an hour, but then when she's doing the GIS stuff, she's making $12 an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's a special trade, trade and stuff like that. I mean, you gotta do a lot of um, training on that to do that stuff, so um, she's wanting to move her to the same pace she's making during her regular hours. And uh, they're talking about, um, the council has um, approached me and the, the auditor about possibly um, seeing if we'd be interested in either splitting what we're collecting now half and half, or maybe we raise a little bit and go half and half, um, and then put half that money into the flat book fee, which pays for her um, work that she does on the GIS for us. Um, she does, I mean, she actually helps us out with the zoning and everything else too, so, and uh, so uh, just, they're gonna talk about it and probably talk one or more to November meeting, but just kind of keep that in mind that we may look at being either, uh, I'll talk to Cameron, he says about maybe going, raising it to $40 and then split it 20, 20 each way. I, so. I was gonna say that our fee for splits is way too low yeah. for all the work so, that's involved in it. it you usually have to go the only, and look at a lot she's of She's the only person that has rights to that data as well. She's the only one that can get in there and do our mm -hmm. 911 or, or the stuff that I give her. So. I have access to it, but she's the only one that can do the parcel stuff like that. So she's, and Lauren is very good. Very good. She's been doing it for a few years now. So, uh, so what do we do to do first? We need to increase our fee. Um, well, they're, they're going to come back to us. Um, I mean, I, they just wanted to kind of, want me to run by the board today just to kind of give you a heads up. Hey, it's coming. Just maybe, um, maybe next meeting we may have to, uh, I don't know if we have to do that, but once we have the council meeting with their, It's pretty slow. It's not slow, but the flood part is very controversial right now for obvious reasons. There's no, um, I still get, and Lori gets 100 phone calls on a day, and it's really hard to tell someone that they can't build a house in the flood zone right now because they have 185 feet of beach. <laughs> so the 300 phone calls we're getting now are, there's a lot of questions on why, you know, on top of the normal questions of can we build here, can we not build here, it is why are we still being held to this? water um, so uh, just, we've just been real busy and, and Lori has done a great job of keeping up with um, everything that's going on in the office so getting a lot of people's calling in for nuisance complaints which we've addressed um, but it's been it's been staying, staying above and keeping up I will email you guys the township report tomorrow morning our IT stuff is all figured out. The printer that we've had issues with for three months, 
uh, Randy and then Bucket talk here every night on a Friday that I was gone and tackled it, I think, most of the day, and we are finally getting stuff to work. So, uh, got a couple more things this week, but we can crack things out again without making so much paper. Other than that,